Hello everyone, I'm Panda Lemon Tart and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be making a public high school for our Maple Street town, which I decided to call Maple Town. Not the high school, just the town. Um, anyways, um, I'm so sorry this video took so long to upload. I had a cold for a while and then I had internet problems. Anyways, enjoy the video. <laughs> We are so close to finishing this town. As you can see here, there's only a few slots left to fill in. I started off by clearing the space near the high school plot so we can efficiently use the space. Now I'm trying to add a drop-off zone for parents to drop off their kids and for school buses too. We need not only cater for students who get dropped off though, but for those who choose to walk to school, hence the pedestrian crossings. Maple Town is a pretty small town, so many students prefer to walk to school. This public high school only consists of one building, ultimately putting all the school torture in one concentrated area instead of many. One thing you should also know about this high school is that it lacks funding, and it is struggling overall. With the teen spirit low and the teacher spirit also low, this school breeds more couch potatoes than academics. I used the classic design of western public high schools and used bricks for the exterior and I also made sure to add lots of windows as an extra torture method so while students are stuck doing algebraic equations, they also get a glimpse of the outside world, mainly the new arcade in town which happens to be right across the street. Using a basic shape, a massive clock was added for that classic look and it also serves as a reminder for the whole town that when that shorthand is anywhere between 8am and 4pm on a weekday, that teen hang about your small business is probably up to no good. I quickly planned out the layout of our public high school. It does have three floors and I was really hoping to fit um, everything you guys suggested. Um, and I really did my best, but the school is quite small and I did have to double up on the subjects taught in a single classroom, which I think really embodies the whole lacking of funds aspect of this small town high school. I continued the bricks theme on the interior walls, but this time I tried to brighten it by using mainly white plaster. You'll see later on that some rooms are painted and some rooms are not and that's because the school isn't able to afford the renovations to happen all at once. I made a high school in Bloxburg before but this time I really tried to challenge myself by making lockers using basic shapes. These are actually what I wished my high school lockers looked like back when I was a teenager. The worst locker I had was made out of this hollow plastic that was really easy to get into. Anyways, I made them in pairs and sprinkled them all over the school and I just put multiple down if the wall space is bigger. Two lockers cost nearly 2k dollars, okay? Th which isn't cheap at all, but they are definitely an upgrade from the decal lockers I used to have. Before focusing on each room, I decided to give them a whiteboard each. I went on Google later on and realized that most schools still use blackboards and chalk because they are cheaper. Where I live though, all the blackboards have been replaced with whiteboards even in public schools. So it really didn't come to me then when I was making this build. But that's okay. Let's just say that the nearby town's mayor from Autumnville decided to gift this to Maple Town's public high school. The first classroom I decided to tackle was the drama room located on the third floor. I gave the walls a black color. Um, I don't really know why most drama rooms are dark. I don't know if it's to get into the zone or for the light stage to work better. But yeah, I just copied that from my old drama classroom. I wanted to add lots of props that the drama students might need including costumes and I made a little stage for the performers to practice on. I am very aware that this is a really small classroom but it is what it is. One thing I probably got wrong this whole build is adding air conditioners because a lot of public high schools do not have funds for that IRL but they just look so aesthetic like their back is so aesthetic and so I decided to add them anyways. Sue me. After failing miserably at inventing a table, I made this chair and table combo by adding a basic shape on top of an existing table. We'll be using this for most of our classrooms and this room right here is the English classroom. There's really nothing special to it like any other English classroom really. Um, To be fair, that is what I'm going for. I do not want students to enjoy going to the school. I want them to be bored and sad and a little tortured. Moving on, we have the cooking classroom next or rather the home ec classroom. Not gonna lie, I think I really impressed myself by making this one because I did not think I was going to be able to fit so much into it where players can still move around nicely. On each counter, there would be one pair working together to save up resources. These foods that they do end up making would end up in the school cafeteria so the school can sell it to other students. 
I remember someone suggesting a sewing room, so I decided that this kitchen can double up as a sewing classroom as well when it isn't in use. For the meantime though, the sewing machines sit behind the teacher's counters so not just anyone can access them. For a cooking classroom, a good ventilation is a must, so I did add a number of vents. While recording the making of the library, tragedy struck my desktop computer. The power went off, hence rendering the footage I filmed irretrievable. But I still soldiered on. I added a computer so students can go look for books um, in the library portal. And I also am adding patches of stringy carpets right now. This carpet is a good half a century old, um, so it does need replacing. I made sure to add these um, sitting areas too, typically where I would hang out if I actually went to the school. Via the library, we can access the computer rooms where students can go do their assignments if they do not have access to a device at home. This room is quite boring so I decided to make it look a little bit more interesting by adding a cord to the computer and then attaching it to the power points. Because how else can the computers turn on if they aren't plugged in? <laughs> After finishing up on that room, we are done with the whole third floor. Now we will start on the second floor. This is our science classroom. Science classrooms usually have counters, but Bloxburg counters are quite wide, so I used desks instead and stools. However, I still added surrounding counters at the back for the sinks and equipment to go onto. Eventually, we will be able to copy paste from other rooms like what we're doing right now with the teacher's lecture podium thing. I included a lot of the shelving so that way a lot of the beakers and chemicals are safely stored and out of reach for random people. If you are a frog lover, close your eyes because in this particular class, they are dissecting a frog. This is a science classroom um, and it is used for different types of science, biology, chemistry, physics, etc. The fume hood and the more dangerous and corrosive chemicals are stored in the storage room as well as other equipment. Following the correct protocols, a safety shower is also installed just in case of emergencies. This high school is already dirt poor and they cannot afford a lawsuit, so it is better to be safe than sorry. The next classroom is the history and geography classroom. There really isn't too much to show you here, but it is just a copy of the English room, but a little bit bigger, and it has a storage room for no reason at all, so there's that. Moving on to a more interesting classroom, actually maybe it's too interesting, we are doing the art classroom now. I don't know if you've noticed, but this build isn't supposed to be aesthetic, at least not Bloxburg aesthetic, if you get what I mean. My builds are always a little realistic, and I think that's what makes them nice. So you can see that in this classroom, it's a total sensory overload with paintings and bright walls wherever you look. I added a sink to get water when we are painting, and put up a fake fruit bowl at the front for the students to draw in different perspectives. I also added other forms of arts like pottery projects. The next room is math class, and like before, this one isn't really interesting at all. It's just a copy of the English and Geography room. The one thing I did add that's a little bit different is the desk facing at the back wall for naughty kids to sit on. The next thing we are building is a bathroom, or bathrooms, plural, for girls and boys. I used basic shapes to make the partition and the door, and that is why these stalls have zero privacy. You cannot close the doors. It's because I wanted them to look like real toilet stalls with half walls. This one might be one of my favorite rooms in this whole school. It has graffiti everywhere to embody that teen rebelliousness. And I even added a hand dryer and puddles of whatever on the floor. I'm fully aware that this looks like a jail cell, but this is the school reception and inside is where the office ladies work. This room is where important files are held, well aside from the principal's room. Um, I did try to make it a little bit cluttered to give it a little bit of life. Mind you, we don't have a sick bay, but we do have this extra luxurious chair where sick students can rest while the office ladies can mind them in their peripheral vision. Going inside the staff room, I wanted this room to speak for itself. It is very mundane, and yeah, it really sucks the life out of ya. Next up is our gym. I went for a basketball court. I probably shouldn't have added a court because it just makes it look even tinier. I also grabbed the net from the arcade game to reuse here. Anyways, this room is a multi-purpose gymnasium. This is where the assemblies are held, health class, plays, basketball games, PE. I'm adding cracks everywhere too to really show the age of the school. I also thought that they deserve showers so I gave them two stalls of that. Our last classroom is just a spare room where 
any class can take place. It also can act as a detention room. Our last office is the principal's room. But before you get there, there is a waiting room where the secretary's office is. I added lockers in there for the secretary and principal to have extra storage for their personal belongings. The principal's office also has two guest chairs, perfect for meetings with the parents. There is also a janitor's closet where students sometimes sneak in while cutting class. We are now up to our cafeteria. I heard that rectangular tables are best so some students don't feel left out in circular tables, so you bet I added the circular ones for extra emotional torture. I copied the elements of the kitchen we did upstairs and pasted it on our cafeteria kitchen. I got excited with these catering appliances from the new New Year's updates, so I mindlessly added them only to realize that I shouldn't have because they serve really bougie foods. So I deleted them eventually and added chicken nuggets and all that jazz. I added finishing touches to our build like a trophy case, study nooks, added food and rubbish, I decorated a locker and finished off with landscaping. Welcome to Maple Town Public High School, a struggling school home to super angsty teens, at least on weekdays. Let me tour you around. Outside we have a drop-off zone, we have bicycle racks over there as well, and yeah, oh my gosh, like this build took me forever. Forever to finish, okay? Inside, this is what it looks like. The school reception first, um, where you sign in if you're late. And then the office lady's office. Sadly, we don't have a sick bay, like I said before. This is the staff room. It is very sad. Very sad only, like Natiri once said. <laughs> Sorry, Avatar's still like kind of stuck in my brain. Anyways, going back into the tour, this is the gymnasium, the multi-purpose hall, okay? It has a podium over there and stacks of chairs for, you know, other events that can be held here. It is quite small. It has a shower at least that no one really uses. Okay, that's kind of unhygienic. Anyways. I understand we're lacking space inside, so I was like, why not take this outside so people can just run around here, you know? We can do sports activities here. Over to the side, this is kind of like a last minute design choice. That one opens um, into the garden thing. Not really, it's a vegetable garden. But before that, we'll go to the janitor's closet. Nothing much to see here, but like a bunch of people making out probably. <laughs> Anyways, going inside the, well outside, the gardens. Um, it's full of weeds and stuff because I kind of wanted to show that no one takes care of it. You know, people don't care about vegetables. Whatever. <laughs> um, going back into the main hall, we are going inside the principal's office first. I wanted three chairs, you know, for Ron, Hermione, and Harry. And going inside, it's, I don't know, it's pretty basic. It's pretty basic. As, like I said before, it's not supposed to be aesthetic. It's supposed to be realistic, okay? Hauntingly realistic of what I endured during my high school years. Um, I did go to a public school and then a private school eventually, but I just saw the massive difference. <laughs> so anyways, this is the cafeteria. I put a stack of uh, trays, which you can carry like this, and you can sit down and, you know, have a seat. Oh my gosh, this is such a like cool concept. I never really had a cafeteria in my like schools. So we had canteens. Cafeterias are such, are such a cool concept though. Cafeterias. I don't know, that's just me living like my American dream in my head. And you bet that you will get salmonella from this kitchen because <laughs> it's so dang dirty, okay? Anyways, moving back into the main area over here is like, we're not going to do that yet. We're going to do this area here. Art room. Art room. Yeah, sensory overload, getting the creative juices flowing. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and there's like a massive locker like thing here and... If you remember, okay, don't judge. If you remember, in like the first house that I did in Maple Street, there was a teenager that lived there with a Bakugo poster, right? That was her, that's her locker, guys. You know, I want to tie everything together. Tie everything together in Maple Street. The lore, the characters that live here. Oh gosh, I love it. I love it. Going into the women's toilet. I love this bathroom because it has graffiti everywhere. The graffiti are not mine. I just got them from the Roblox catalog thing. But the posters are mine. Most of them anyways. I made that for like 
climate academy or something. Moving into the maths classroom, very boring. You know, you cannot focus in this room. It's too boring. That's really what I was going for. Going to this uh, closed door uh, hallway here, I intended for these to be both science classrooms, but I thought, you know, we'll, we'll just have one. The school can't afford it. Can't afford to have two classrooms. We also have robots for robotics. Never had a robotics class before, but I assumed it would be in the science classroom. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm thinking that maybe that could be like just an extracurricular. I love my safety shower. I think you guys should also add them to your school builds because how can it be safe if it doesn't have a, an emergency shower? Um, and you know where your safety shower is at school. You should because I don't even know. Okay, whatever. I don't care. Going outside, we are gonna go to the history slash geography classroom. I pack these into just like one classroom because studying history is studying geography, or rather, studying geography is studying history. It has a random storage room. Like I said, I meant for this to be a second science room, and that's why it has that. And I just had to go with it. The boys. Toilets. Wow. Um, you might be able to notice that's a little bit more messy than the girls. And yeah, guys, I actually tried to attempt to make a urinal for this build. Okay, I failed miserably, but I tried. Anyways, going upstairs to the last um, and third floor, we are going to the English classroom first, where Shakespeare is studied. Yeah, what else? People read books there. Anyways. This is the performing arts room, or drama room, or music room, really. I tried to lump in the musical instruments there as well, because where else would I put them? People wanted a music classroom. I don't have one for that. We are faced with more lockers, and over here we have a trophy case. We only have one trophy, guys. And it's from like, 1969 or something. From really, from a really long time ago. <laughs> this is the home ec classroom, the kitchens, and the sewing classroom. Like I said, I actually started going a little bit desperate um, in terms of classrooms, so I started putting two subjects in one classroom. And I think it works out fine. Actually, it really embodies that lacking of funds thing like I said before. But moving on, we are now gonna go to our library. Our very small library, but it's okay, everything's online now anyways. Except these, like, students probably don't have devices. Anyways, <laughs> let's go to the computer room where if you don't have a device, this is where you'd be because you'd need a computer to study. Anyways, yeah, that's all for this build, guys. I hope you liked it. Um, yeah, comment down below. Let me know what you think. This took me forever. Please go like and subscribe. Bye.